We are on lesson 18 of calculus. We're talking about increasing and decreasing functions today in the first derivative test. We're going to determine intervals on which a function is increasing, which remember means it's going up and it's got a positive slope or where it's decreasing. Again, these are things that you learn in pre-calculus and you graphed something um, on your calculator and found the intervals where it was increasing and decreasing by finding the maximum and the minimums and between those two points had increasing and decreasing intervals. But again, we're gonna use calculus to find it now, but it's something that you know how to do. So again, when the derivative or f prime is less than zero, it's gonna be decreasing and have a negative slope where the first derivative is equal to zero at, you've got a constant slope and when the first derivative is greater than zero, you've got a positive slope because it's increasing. So the test for increasing and decreasing. Let f be a function that is continuous on the closed interval AB and differentiable on the open interval AB. If the first derivative is greater than zero for all x in AB, then f is increasing or has a positive slope. If f prime of x is less than zero or negative, then it's decreasing or has a negative slope. If the first derivative is equal to zero, then the slope is constant or equal to zero. All right. And then, so what we do to figure those intervals out is we take the derivative and we locate the critical numbers in f. So find the first derivative, find the critical numbers in that interval, and using those critical numbers, we're gonna cut it in the different intervals and decide on which of those intervals it's increasing or decreasing. So find the critical numbers, determine the sign of f prime in those intervals, and then use the theorem of 3.5 to determine whether it's increasing or decreasing on each. All right, so let's do that here. So number eight, honestly, again, you can just verify it by looking at the picture. We can tell the intervals there where it's increasing or decreasing at, but we're gonna use calculus to figure it out. So the first thing we have to do is find the critical numbers, which we did on the other sections. And to find the critical numbers, we take the first derivative. So let's do that. So f prime of x is equal to four x to the third minus four x, and so we're going to find the critical number. So we want to know when that is equal to zero. So where is f 4x to the third minus 4x equal to zero? I'm going to factor out 4x. And so that's when 4x is equal to zero or where x squared minus one is equal to zero. So you get zero for it and you get plus or minus one. And you can see that on the picture, that's where they're at. We have one, a max at zero, and then at negative one, we have a min, and at positive one, we also have a minimum. But again, we're, we're supposed to use calculus, so let's do that. So the critical numbers, C is equal to negative one, zero, and one. So that breaks it up into intervals. And so it helps sometimes when you think about where the intervals are at, put them on a number line. So we have zero, negative one, positive one, going to negative infinity to the left and positive infinity to the right. So that makes the interval negative infinity to negative one, negative one to zero, zero to one, and then one to infinity. So what you wanna do is make a little chart here. These are our test intervals. And so again, negative infinity to negative one. And then negative one to zero. Zero to one. And then one to infinity. So I broke it into four intervals. Three numbers break something into four intervals. And so on those intervals, we wanna know what the sign are. I mean, obviously the sign here is negative and the sign here is positive negative, and then over here it's positive. But if we didn't know that, if we didn't have a picture, how would we figure that out? We'd do that by plugging it back into the derivative. 
So what is the sign? Is it positive or negative for f prime of c? So when you plug in those numbers, what can you conclude? Is it positive or is it negative in that interval? So you you're supposed to pick any number that you want in that interval to test it. So like in this interval, I love the number 10. So I could try f prime of negative 10. Here maybe f prime of negative 1 half, then f prime of positive 1 half, and over here f prime of 10. Now we don't need to find the actual number. We just need to know whether the number is negative or positive. It's ne if it's negative, it means it's got a negative slope and it's decreasing. If it's positive, it's got a positive slope and it's increasing. So again, the derivative of it here was 4x times x squared minus 1. That's what f prime was. So I'll just plug the whole number in just to help you out here. But overall, you don't really need to do that. If you plug in the negative 10, that's going to give you a negative number on the first chunk. And on the second chunk, when you plug it in, negative 10 squared is positive 100 minus 1. So that's positive. That's negative. So a negative and a positive overall makes a negative, or it's decreasing in this interval. If you wanted to, you could find the whole answer, though. You could do negative 40 times 99, and you'd see that it was a negative number, but you, you don't have to do that. All right, and then negative 1 half times 4 would give you negative 2. And then negative 1 half squared is positive 1 fourth. Minus 1 is negative 3 fourths. So you have two negatives, so it's a positive. So on this interval, it's increasing. Put in the number 1 half. A half times 4 is 2. And then a half squared is a fourth. A fourth minus 1 is negative 3 fourths. So you got a positive times a negative, which is negative. So it's decreasing again. And then put a 10 in. 4 times 10 is 40. And then 10 squared is 100 minus 1 is positive 99. So a positive times a positive is positive. So it's increasing. So you would want to write it out then. You would want to say that, um, well, you'd say the conclusion here. Decreasing. Um, negative infinity to negative 1. And 0 to 1. Increasing. Uh, it's increasing from negative 1 to 0 and from 1 to infinity. And again, that's what we saw on the picture. So we can confirm it again on the picture. It was decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing. And then notice um, between where it's decreasing and going down and then increasing, you got a min. When it's going up and then down, you've got a max. And then when it's going down and then back up, you've got another minimum. When the signs change, that's where you got extrema at. And that's what the first derivative test talks about. Um, when you have the slope changing from negative to positive, you have a minimum. When it changes from positive to negative, you got a max. And when f is positive on both sides or negative on both sides, then you don't have a maximum or a minimum if there's not really any change in it, is what the first derivative test says. And that, that just makes sense. Again, you're going downhill and then you're going uphill. You've got a minimum. If you're going uphill and then you go downhill, you got a max. You can kind of just think it out. It's not really something you need to memorize. Just think it out. Okay, so on the next one it says, find the critical numbers of f, if any, find the open intervals on which it's increasing or decreasing, and then apply the first derivative test and identify all relative extrema. All right, so what we need to do on this one, again, is you take the derivative of it to start with. So we're going to want to take the derivative to find any critical numbers on it. So doing the first derivative on it, f prime of x, gives you two, well, 
gives you 3x squared minus 12x, and the 15 is just gone. And again, to find them, it helps us just factor, factor it. So I'm going to take out 3x. So that gives you x minus 4. So it's either to get the critical numbers in, after you take the derivative, you have to set the factors equal to 0. So where is f prime of x equal to 0 at? So you get 0 and you get um, positive 4. So those would be the critical numbers. So 0 and 4. So that would break it then in the intervals. Again, you can draw a number line. It can help you sometimes. You got 0, you got 4, negative infinity, positive infinity. So the test intervals. Uh, so for the test intervals, we've got negative infinity to 0, and then 0 to 4, and then 4 to infinity. And again, we want to know what the sign is of them. What is f prime of x in those intervals? That's so bad. Let me re-read it. So those are the test intervals. All right, so again, just like we were doing on the last page, you pick a number in it, any number you want, and plug it into that first derivative, which was 3x times x minus 4. So I like, again, negative 10 is a nice one. Maybe 2. And then positive 10. So... If I put a po uh, the negative 10 in here, that would give me a negative 30 times negative 14. So two negatives are positive, so it's increasing. If I plug the number 2 in, I would have 6 times negative 2. And so that's a positive times a negative, so that's negative. So it's decreasing. If you plug in positive 10, that gives you 30 times 6, which is positive, so it's increasing. So it was increasing, which means it's going up, and then it was decreasing, and then it goes increasing again. So at that number 0, at x equal to 0, it's going to be a um, max. And then at the number 4, it's going to be a minimum. So writing it all out here, we want to find where that point is at exactly. So to find out where this point is on the graph, don't go back to the derivative. Go back to the original function f of x. I'm going to put a little star here. Go back To f of x. We want to know where on the graph that point is at. So I want to find f of 0 and f of 4. So on the original equation here, if you put 0 in there, you'd have 0 minus 0 plus 15. If I put the number 4 in, I'd have 4 to the third minus 6 times 4 squared plus 15. And if you did the math on all of that, you'd get the number negative 17. So the final answer here, we have increasing on negative infinity to 0 and 4 to infinity. And it was decreasing on 0 to 4. And then we had a relative max at 0, 15 and a relative min on 4, negative 17. All right, Let's see what else there is to see here. All right, this one's fun to do. Let's do 38. 38 is more fun than 34. Um, all right, let's try this one. 
So again, we got to take the derivative. So taking the derivative here, oh, we'll need more paper. We'll start with this piece though. So f prime of x, again, take it's a quotient, so I'm going to take the derivative of the top. So that would be 2x minus 2, and then times the denominator, then minus the top times the derivative of the denominator, which is 1, then all over the denominator squared. All right, so that's the first derivative. So cleaning it up here, um, well, I guess it's really not that interesting. We're going to have to foil out that first one and then combine it with the second one. So cleaning it up here, foiling out the first one here, we've got 2x times x, 2x squared, and 2x times 1 plus 2x, and then minus 2x in the middle, and then minus 2. So cleaning the whole thing up then, we have 2x squared plus x squared, which is 3x squared. And then we still have minus a minus 2x, so that's plus 2x. And then minus 2 and then minus 1, so that comes up to minus 3. Wait a minute. Oh, no, I did it wrong. It was 2x squared minus x squared, so that just made x squared. I had 2x squared minus x squared, which is x squared. All right. And then all that again is over x plus 1 squared. And again, we're trying to find the critical numbers where it's equal to 0 at. So let's see if that, that factor is on the top. That factor is into x plus 3 times x minus 1 over x plus 1 squared. So the critical numbers we can find here really quick just eyeballing it. Then it's going to be negative 3, 1, and negative 1 because those numbers make it either undefined or equal to zero, and it's all about where the graph is equal to zero or undefined at. So that breaks it into quite a few intervals. Let's see here. We got negative three, negative one, and one. Again, it's going to negative infinity and to infinity. So we've got the interval here, negative infinity to, to um, negative three, and then negative 3 to negative 1, negative 1 to 1, and then 1 to infinity. So those are the test intervals. And what we want to do then is see what the sign of it is in those intervals. So maybe I'll try negative 10 there, negative 2, 0, 10. And again, the derivative of it here was x plus 3 times x minus 1 over x plus 1 squared. Obviously, the denominator is always going to be positive. So all we really need to worry about is are the signs that are on the top because it's squared, so it doesn't matter. So if I put a negative 10 in, I would get here um, negative 7 times a negative 11. And then again, over a positive number, negative 10 plus 1, I'm just going to write it out. We got negative 9 squared. So on the top, it's positive, And again, on the bottom, it's positive. So the whole thing's positive or increasing in this interval. If I plug in a negative 2, I've got positive 1 times negative 3 over negative 2 plus 1, negative 1 squared, which again, positive, and that's negative. So you've got a negative divided by positive. So that's negative, so decreasing. If you put 0 in, you'd have positive 3, negative 1, and then 1 squared. So that's going to be negative. So decreasing still. And if you put a 10 in, you'd have 13 times 9 over 11 squared. So that's positive or increasing. So at the number negative 3, it was increasing and then decreasing. So that made it a max. So x equal to negative 3 is a max. And then here it was decreasing and decreasing, so negative 1 doesn't mean anything. So and then decreasing and increasing makes that number 1 um, a minimum. So x equal 1 is a minimum. So wrapping the whole thing up here, summing the whole thing up, 
we've got increasing on negative infinity to negative 3 and from 1 to infinity and then we have decreasing from negative 3 to negative 1 and negative 1 to 1 and then we got a relative max at negative 3 we need to find the y still and then we add a relative min at one and we need to find the y again to find the y be very careful you don't don't go back to the derivative and plug it in don't do it you got to go back to the original function the original f function and the original f of x was x squared minus 2x plus 1 over x plus 1 plug it back in the original function because we want to know where that point was on the original function so you put negative 3 in there and do negative 3 squared minus 2 times 3 plus 1 over negative 3 plus 1, you're going to get negative 8. And if you put the 1 in, you get 0. All right, we're out of time. I'll see you for the next lesson.